Hello, everybody, and welcome to One Player. Today, it's the second installment of our coverage of the BGG Solitaire Print and Play Design Contest. I am absolutely ecstatic to be joined by my other YouTubers this week who are playing some lovely games from the contest. We have Vaselko, trust him to pick the blood sport. He is playing hunter games, in by which you try to fell various types of animals with your giant bazooka weapons. Dimitri is playing Tacmento, which is an 18-card like battle strategy game. Looks kind of fun. Sir Thekos is playing a game mysteriously now removed um, since his recording from the contest. Um, go and solve the mystery of, of that over there on his channel. Um, Dungeon of Gems is the game name. And then Solo McLaughlin is playing a lovely-looking game by the name of Glitch Pixel. Now, you may be familiar because I have played that on the channel um, before. That's because it is mine and my co-designer Chris Kings North's entry into this year's contest. Last year was uh, Dante's descent into medieval hell. This year is futuristic cyberpunk dystopian art forgery. So, you know, that's just how game design goes sometimes. Once you finish this video, all the links to those um, videos will be down in the description below. Go check out the Discord for more lovely goings-on in regards to the Solitaire Print and Play contest. Um, obviously, go check out the threads um, of all the games so you can leave the designers' feedback if you do decide to play them yourself. And let's get on with it, shall we? On my table this week is Lubeck. And Lubeck is a game played entirely with a standard 52-card deck of cards. Now, I know what you're thinking, Matt, it's a little early to be pulling the time out. I can't print any components this week, so I'll just play a card game kind of game. And that is valid. But I like the look of this game, and I just wanted to make sure that I bagsied it before anyone else got to, uh, got to, <laughs> got to, got to shotgun their coverage. So we're playing, um, we're playing Lubeck, and it is a solitaire variant. Now, it's based off of a game that I'd never heard of um, called Royal Assassin. So I don't know if it's made improvements on that because I've never played Royal Assassin. But essentially, the, it looks like the addition of um, scoring and various trials and also a bit more strategy involved. So looks like it's a net gain in terms of um, in terms of that game design. Um, and I'll show you how to play. It's pretty straightforward. Like I said, all you're going to need is a deck of cards um, shuffled up just lovely. Lovely? Yeah, that's words. And I figured because, you know, we're playing a relatively um, uh, component light game, I'd just, you know, I'd make the table look nice and fancy. So we've got some nice glowy lights to entertain you while I just play around with this deck. Now, this is the uh, Lucky 13 deck, I should say, um, I should introduce, which I backed on Kickstarter a little while ago. And the cool thing about this is that even though in Lubeck you're kind of fighting the Royals-ish, you're not really, you're just doing adds and adds and subtractions. So the cool thing about this deck is that it goes up to 13. No, no, no. I hear what you're saying. Normal decks go up to 10. That's enough. No, no, no. This one goes up to 13. We don't have kings or queens or jacks around here. None of that royalty malarkey. We have got just sheer numbers. You, th you didn't think you could fit 13 spades onto a card? You can. And, of course, the joke is a little cats, which is also brilliant. So, anyway, now I'm going to shuffle again because I just showed you the deck. Essentially, what we're doing is trying to fulfill trade contracts that come into the port of Lübeck. Lübeck, I believe, is a German city, port city. And so we have trade contracts that show up in our in our docks, and we have to uh, assign them to various warehouses in order to please the various, again, royals or, you know, whatever it, whatever it may be. <laughs> um, we score... Um, negative points if any royals are left in the warehouses at the end of the game, and we score positive points if we've able to if we've if we've been able to conduct our trades with prestige. Again, that's a new mechanic I'm adding on to the Royal Assassin uh, rule set. So here we are to start. We've got our deck. We've shuffled it, and we're going to start just playing out cards until we hit some royals, and then well, there you go. We'll show you. I'll show you what happens. We've got four. Imagine if you will. We have two dock spaces right here, and then four warehouses. I'm going down in lines like this. Each warehouse is assigned to one of the suits, so this will be the diamond warehouse. Um, very expensive, I imagine, or a very valuable warehouse to own. This will be the diamond warehouse, and then we're just going to keep flipping in the setup um, until we hit 
more royals. This is going to be um, another one. And then we keep flipping until the value of the card is equal to or lower than the number of royals we've put in the warehouses. So right now, if we pull the two, it, we would stop the setup. Um, as it is, we're going to keep going and keep going and keep going. And now we're now anytime we pull a three or lower, just like that, that's the end of setup. These cards are going to get shuffled and placed at the bottom of the deck. We're going to draw ourselves one purse card. This is the, oh, no, we're not. That's going to go into the, oh, we can't have a royal in your purse. That doesn't make any sense. Um, we're going to draw a purse card. There we are. And now we're ready to play. So this card essentially acts as our way to get rid of unwanted cards generally. I'm going to move these down just a little bit because there's something that's going to have to sit above them in just a moment. And what we do from here is essentially just deal out uh, two cards into the dock to start a turn. So those are our cards and these are the, these are the cards we're able to use as trade. The way that we fill trade contracts is thusly. We move cards from the dock into a warehouse of an opposing color. Doesn't matter the suit, just as long as we have a black card going onto a red warehouse or a red card going onto a black warehouse, either one is fine. And what we're looking to do is have the number of pips match the um, adjacent, I guess, royal that is just above the trade. So for example, here we've added three black pips. We need eight more in order to, in order to fulfill this trade. If I were to place it here, we would need nine more to match the 12. And so we go ahead and just, we can take um, a number of actions on a turn, which I imagine I'll just explain as we go. But one of the main ones is to try and fulfill a trade contract. Um, and that's primarily what we're going to be looking to do. Then we check to see if there are any cards in the dock that are going to be assessed as warehouse fees. Now, I'll explain how this works. Probably it'll be best just to show you an example. There's no warehouse fees to be assigned right now, so we just move on to the next turn. And that means we deal out some more contracts into the dock. Now, you'll see I've actually drawn two royals. Um, that is, 11s are, would, be, would be jacks in a regular deck of cards. So we place those directly into their appropriate warehouses. Um, stacking them as necessary. And now you see we've got four warehouses full of royals. Um, one spades, one clubs, two diamonds, and two hearts. We've got a slight shortage of cards up in the old dock now, but that's okay. We can we can manage. What I think we're gonna do, um, one of our so one of our one of our actions, as you've already seen, is to place cards onto trades. Another action we can do is exchange our purse card with one of the dock cards. And that's what I'm going to do here. Again, get this in play because it could be helpful to us trying to get up to these larger numbers here. If I can put an 8 down on a 12, I only need 4 more. Eh, maybe it's worth it. Now, again, I'm going to check for warehouse fees. There are none right now. The way that we do that, or what I'm looking for, is essentially cards in here that have a matching suit to an active trade. So for example, if this card was going towards this trade, the heart, I would see this and have to then move it from the dock and kind of offset that trade. So now I'd be back at negative five. If you can imagine I've scored three towards 11, we'd remove eight points and I'd be at a negative five. It wouldn't be good. But here we are. This does not affect these diamonds, and so we are good to go. Next turn is gonna look something like this. We've got two diamonds and a five of diamonds. And I suppose, well, we know that um, one of these is going to go and be assessed as a fee toward this card, correct? We probably prefer it not be the five. And so we've got a couple of options of what we can do with the five. We can either start a new trade, like we could move it onto the start of another um, black warehouse here. Or we could use this card as what's called leverage. Leverage trades gives us prestige points at the end of the game. And so if I kind of nestle this up here... Uh, you can see it it's just off camera, but you, you it won't matter. You, you only need to know the number, really, or even just know it's there. But essentially what this means is once we complete this trade, or once slash if we complete this trade, we score this amount of prestige points. We essentially just keep this until the end and count them up at the very, very end of the game, and that's how we score points. Now, it's not a bad idea, and especially... This could be fine, this could be fine. There's different options, and I think I'm going to go with leverage for now. Scoring leverage is nice, it's necessary to win, um, which is a rare occurrence. If you are me, I've played lots of this um, game over the past two weeks, and 
my win percentage is very bad. I'm not sure if it's me or if it's just because it's a solitaire game and solitaire games usually have low win percentages. Obviously, there's some strategy involved, but apparently I'm just not very good. Um, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm not, I don't need to be good to play through a game. Uh, you can just watch me and then learn how to get better. I think that's how this works. So, at the end of that turn, I'm placing this up here as leverage, and then I'm going to check for warehouse fees. Here's one. I'm going to add two warehouse fees to this trade. So now, essentially, I'm looking to get a total of 13. So I've still got 10 to go. Lovely stuff. I've now got one ace in my purse, which I can do stuff with if I so desire. But for now, let's pull some new cards into the dock. We've got some spades, and we've got some hearts. Now, this heart... If I were to place this onto here, for example, that would be a bad idea because this would immediately get assessed as a fee. If I were to place this on here, um, this would immediately get assessed as a fee. And I cannot combine suits when making trades. So now I've set this trade as clubs, I cannot use a spade towards it. So with that said, I think the best option is for me to place this for up over here. Now you can only place, uh, another option would of course to be um, place it as leverage, but you can only do that once there's an active trade. So there's no other active trades other than this diamond trade. I'm gonna have to place it on the clubs here. There are no other, as long as I can, as far as I can see, yeah, there are no other warehouse fees to be assessed. So we're gonna keep going on to the next. Mm, I'm less, less, less keen on that, aren't I? Um, so, for example, this 9 could move over here and get a nice chunk towards my 11. But then we're going to go into kind of arrears on this trade if that happens. Um, now, I could theoretically place this up here, and I don't think that would be a bad idea. Nothing would be assessed as a fee, which is good. Um, or I could be... Yeah, or I could do this, that would go here, or I could do this, and yeah, this is the best option, I think. So we've got a couple of diamonds up here, which is, we just need to, we just need to remember that those are not available to us. So four and five diamonds are gone. If we're looking to make big trades, um, we probably don't want to try and use diamonds as much, if we can help it. I mean, there's, there's you know, there's only so many cards in deck, is there not? Right, no trade, uh, no no fees to assess because there's no trades on hearts, there's no trades on spades, so we're going to keep going. We've got ourselves a four of clubs and an ace of spades, and I think the best thing to do with this is to throw it down here. Yes, I'm certain that's the best thing to do. So now we've got, this is where not having them be jacks and kings helps because you can just see the numbers. So 11 plus two is 13, minus seven is six. So we still need six clubs, six pips of clubs to uh, to complete this trade. We should be able to do that in at least a turn or two, question mark. We've got a diamond, ooh, this is tricky. Right, what's happened here? Is this royal shown up and been like, oh, I see you making a trade, that sounds nice. I'm going to come and sit right on top of you. And unfortunately, that means we can no longer continue this trade until we get this fellow out of the way. That is a real shame because, well, um, now we've got to find 12 more black pips out of somewhere. And if you've noticed, well, maybe we could go for, maybe we could go for spades, I suppose. I think my next best option then is to probably, well, I need to use this card. If I don't use this card, it's gonna immediately get assessed. Oh no, it's not gonna get assessed because there's no trade active anymore. Mm, so I could technically leave this on here, but I don't think that's the best thing to do. I don't want it to get buried because obviously using a 10 toward a trade is, is, is usually good practice. So if I do, uh, but if I do this, this is gonna get assessed. <laughs> Ah, oh, this is tricky. Um, and then if I use this here, this is going to get assessed. So I think I might end up passing my turn. If I pass my turn, I don't have anything else to do. The only other thing I could do is maybe exchange this into here. So I've got a 10 in my hand. Um, so it, again, so it doesn't get buried. This would get assessed here. But it's only one, so it's not the end of the world. 
I don't know if this is a good idea, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to exchange my ace of clubs with the 10 into my purse and we'll place this as an assessment there. We're going to hope that this is a spades card because I could do with a spade right here. Nice, big, fat spade. It's a heart. Never mind. We've got a nine of diamonds, though, which could be OK. Um, but I see that this is probably our best bet there, isn't it? We're going to place this on here. We've got 14 against 12, and that completes our very first trade. These are going to go into the boat. We're going to ship our goods off from the warehouse. And because we've got prestige above it, this prestige comes down to us, and we've scored four points thus far in the game. There goes the boat off screen. Choo-choo. Hey, that's a train. Boop, boop. What? What noise does a boat make? Is that, is that a boat? I'm going to stop. Boat goes over here, and uh, those cards are discarded out of the game. We're no longer going to get negative points for that pesky jack. Do we have any uh, fees to assess? No, we do not. Again, this, this interrupting uh, royal down here, this 12, um, doesn't get assessed fees because we haven't yet started another trade. We probably should, though, because not only do we have prestige hanging out above it, we haven't really got much else going on. So let's move on to our next. Hmm. Um, this could go here, but this would get assessed, so we don't like that. This could go here. This would be assessed, but I suppose it's not the worst thing, because we've got a nine, a nice nine waiting for us underneath. So that's what I'm going to do that time, and we'll go ahead and deal some more cards. We've got the king out, which is good, I think. And can we... We could make a nine. We could also, we could also swap it for this ten. Although, mm, no. I think I'm going to do this. This one would be placed as a fee, but that's okay. I think we'll continue, and it'll be all right. This game has, yeah, like I said, it's got a decent amount of decisions in it and a decent amount of crunchiness, more than you might imagine. Um, there's sometimes, there's sometimes when you feel like there's no other choice other than one, you know, there's only like one logical choice to make, that's fine. Um, but there are times when you're kind of stuck between a few decisions and that can, that can be good. That makes good games, right? This is going to get assessed as a fee if we don't do anything with it, um, which means we could theoretically throw it up above something and just score ourselves a single prestige point. Um, that's Fine, I suppose. It's also better than doing anything with this card and having this assessed as the fee. So I think we'll do... Uh, I don't know. Maybe this. Wow, we need some we need some more diamonds on this one. It's only for a it's only for a point, but you know, I don't think we've got much choice. I mean I suppose we could let we could let the turn go, but uh, I don't know. Oh, hello. Um, our, our last royal for, our last royal spade has, has arrived. So unfortunately that gets in the way of that trade rather. But we are able to complete this trade should we want to. Now we won't earn any prestige from it because we don't have any, any uh, leverage on this trade. But it will just clear out the 11. So essentially it's kind of like we're scoring 11 points. Which, yes, I will do. Um... Again, these decisions are decisions that I don't know if they're the good decisions. <laughs> these two, no warehouse fees to be assessed as there are new, no, there's, clubs aren't even part of this game at the minute. We don't mind that, to be honest. We've got a seven of diamonds, which could be moderately helpful toward this fellow. Um, and we wouldn't have any, again, we wouldn't have any fees assessed, so I don't mind it. Remember, I've got this 10 in my purse, too, which I haven't done anything with in a while. I'm going to keep it just down there, right off camera. So we could do with a four of diamonds, if possible. Um, otherwise, yeah, nothing much else, I suppose. We've got some hearts, um, which aren't going to do anything for us. This will be, I suppose, a half-decent card. Um, that gets us to eight out of 11. I just want to get rid of this nice and quick, to be honest. We've got ourselves a club, and we've got ourselves a joker. Right. A couple of things we can do with the joker. We can either use this fellow, this delightful little fellow, as a 14, and essentially just complete a trade 
um, any trade against any royal. Or we can use him as a warehouse manager. Now, if we choose to do that, we place the Joker above any of the warehouses. And essentially, when we complete a trade in that warehouse, we complete trades on all of the royals in that stack, not just the first one. So, for example, right now, if I were to complete this trade, say, I would just take away this and that would go into the boat. However, if I had my warehouse manager on there, oh boy, we'd pick up the entire stack and get rid of all of the royals. As you can imagine, that's quite powerful. And so that's the, that's the option I'm going to go with. However, we don't have a great place to put him already. Um, now we've got rid of one club and one heart. And we can always move him around too, but we can't move them to places that there are already leverage. So I can't put him here, for example, which is a shame, but that's okay. We don't count this as a player action. It just happens. So that's nice. However, we don't really have much else to do unless I want to start another trade, which I suppose wouldn't be a bad idea, would it? I might go here, you know. I don't have any hearts, so there's no fees assessed. I don't have anything going on clubs, so I don't have any fees assessed there. So if I can get some nice other clubs going and get this five prestige, then I wouldn't say no. We've got a 13 of hearts, so that'll move out into this warehouse. Um which tempts me to move this over here, of course. We can complete this trade. Um, I think that's the best option for right now. This will give us a score of 14 to 11, which isn't, you know, it's not overkill as well, so it's nice. You don't want to use too, you know, you, you wouldn't want to use like a 10 and a 9 to beat an 11, right? It's too much. You want to try and conserve your energy, if you will, conserve your contract. Um, that gives me this one prestige, so we're up to five points. Um, that's that's not a lot. I'll just put that out there. Um, and now we're not going to be able to assess any fees onto our um, onto our uh, trades, so that's good. I'm going to go ahead and move this. I, th I can't remember if I do it at the start or the end of my turn, but I don't think it really matters too much. I'm going to move him to here because we've got an active trade now. We've still got an active trade, remember, on spades. This 9, um, minus 1, so 8, is going towards this 13. And if I can somehow finagle it to move, maybe get this 10 involved, I don't know. Maybe we should. We've got some spades coming out. That's unfortunate. Um... Right, now we do have to make a choice because we're, we're either going to get six as a warehouse fee onto here if I use this three, say, here, which I don't think is a good idea. Um, or sorry, if I use it here, obviously. Um, so that would be nine plus three is 12, minus one is 11, minus six is only five. Or, or I use this to start this trade, but then we've got trades going on three of my four suits and this gets played as a fee. I'm not a big fan of either of these options, but I think this is the one I'm gonna go for, mainly because I forgot which order the cards were. I think this was six and this was three, but I think that's what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do. So we've started a hearts trade. This three goes here. No, does it? No, 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 it doesn't, because this, Oh gosh, yeah, I've forgotten which way around it goes. I think, yeah, I think this was six and this was three. Oh, let me Yeah, I think that's how it went, because otherwise we would have to place a seven here and that would be very bad. But I think that's how it was. Uh, yeah, so that's the, that's the fee assessed. We've got a 10 of spades. That could be very helpful. I f again, I forget if I can do this after the, the markets come out. I think I can, but uh, let's just say we can, because this game's hard enough as it is. So I'm going to move my warehouse manager over here, which means that when I place this down, we're going to be able to clear out the entire stack, because um, 10 plus 6 is more than 13. Then we're going to get assessed a fee, which will be this 2. So now we're down to 6 out of 13, which again is fine. Um, we just need to keep an eye on it. Um, I'm still waiting on this prestige. I still need still need to work on that. And we've got ourselves the queen coming into the club uh, club draw here. Now this will be a fee, so we don't want that. I think I might use this and place it up above here as some prestige. Or yes, because if I didn't, 
it would just get assessed here anyway. And now if I do this, even though it would be nice to get my manager over here, this will at least save us from the leverage coming out, um, from adding five more leverage, so essentially just taking this down to one, which would be a real pain in the butt. So there's no leverage to be added. Let's take some other cards. Gosh, we're getting low on the old deck here. Um, I'll take this, though. Again, this will not affect us. This will not affect us. This will get us 16 out of 12. And so this trade is complete. And now we've got back our active trade here. So 7 minus 2 is 5 out of 11. We'll keep going. This comes into our pocket, our purse, our scoring place. This is our purse. This is our scoring place. So now we're scoring 10, which is better. Better. Warehouse manager, you're about to get moved. You're going to go to this warehouse, I believe. And let's deal the next... You know what we haven't seen is... Have we seen all the all the royals for spades now? We've seen 11. Have we seen clubs? No, we still need the 11 of clubs. We've seen diamonds. We've seen all of hearts, and we've seen all of diamonds, yes. So we still need the 11 of clubs to come out, which is... That's a bit nerve-wracking. We can complete this trade, though, which would be pretty good, right? 8 plus 4 is 12 plus 5... What? 8 plus 4 is 12 plus 3 is 15. That is more than 13. Oh, and we've got the warehouse manager, so we can take them all. Lovely stuff. Good job, you. I suppose I'll move you here then. And then we've got no other active trades currently. So all we really need to do now is just try to make sure that we don't do anything stupid. We're going to exchange this for our purse, try to get this onto the board. If we can take out a 13 with it, lovely. If we can take out a 12 with it, also great. We've got hearts and we've got clubs, both of which are awful. Um, we don't need either of them. We don't need black cards anymore at all. This is going to go... Ah, that's so bad. This is going to come here. If I do this, it's going to come here, and this will go there, and we're basically scoring three for a nine, which is not good. Um, otherwise, we can swap this, and this will go here, which I suppose is fine, because... Five, six... Yeah, okay, that's what I'm going to do. Um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to swap this, take this hearts card for myself. This is going to get assessed as a fee. Um, but then hopefully we can... We can get this 10 back. Oh. I thought we had a... Did I miss the 11 of clubs in my deck? Yep. Did I already see that? Oh, it was the 12 of clubs we were waiting for and then we got it. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Okay, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. What have we got that we can use? This is our purse, and we basically just now keep playing. Now the market's gone, we just keep playing until we can't anymore. So, theoretically, we can... What if we did this with this? This becomes our purse. There's no fees assessed. Then we would do this onto here, there's no fees assessed still, this onto here, that's 19 um, out of 19 necessary, right, 3, 5, 6, plus 13 is 19, that's pretty good, 19 out of 19 with another 5 prestige in the mix, don't mind that, and then we can do something along the lines of 9 here, plus seven clears out this. Now we've got nine here. Oh, I think maybe this is where we lose. No, it's not, because we can still keep playing. We can put this onto here. <gasps> this clears the market. And I think I've just won on camera, which is... Unbelievable. Oh, sorry, that's not where that goes. Um, this goes here. 
Yeah, that's 14 over 12. This goes here. I think I've just won. Uh, on camera, that's unbelievable. I've won once at this game, and it was very lucky, and I'm not sure if I was playing it right. I'm not sure if I was playing this right. Hopefully I was. But that's... Wow, that's phenomenal. So did I just score 15, 25, 26, 10, 5? Look at that. 26. Essentially, if there's anything left, if there are any royals left in the warehouses, we add them up. So this would score us 12, this would score us 13, and then we minus our prestige um, from this. Obviously, usually your score usually your score is highly negative, or if, at least if you're me, usually your score is highly negative. But we managed to clear out every single flipping royal. That's brilliant. The surprise in my voice should tell you that this this is a rare occurrence. And so I'm quite I'm quite ecstatic that it happened on camera. Now I'm a bit worried when I get to the editing suite. I'll have to redo this because I've done something terribly wrong. But that is Lubeck. It is a solitaire game played entirely with a 52 card deck. And blimmin' it's pretty tight. It, it's got some, like I said, it's got some crunchy decisions. It's got some cool strategies to make. You've got moves, you options you can options you can take. Um, you're kind of pushing your luck at sometimes trying to score as high a points with your prestige versus like saving the bigger cards to fill your contracts it's quite a smart it's a smart game and i think you could i mean you definitely could thematically upgrade right you could move from playing cards to you know boxes of cookies to fulfill your contracts or whatever people like to trade but as a as an easy rule set um for a deck of cards add it to your arsenal there you go you've got you've got another game you can play i like that I don't mind that at all. Let me know what you think. Give this a go. Um, hopefully you've got a deck of cards at home so you can give it a try. Let me know how you do. Uh, I'll be honest, yes, I lost my first like 10 games easily. So don't don't get discouraged if that happens to you. Maybe I was playing it wrong. I think I was being too harsh with myself for a while on the, on the Joker. I wasn't allowing myself to move him, which was a much, much... Or I, I got rid of him a couple of times after I made trades by accident. So that happened. But, yeah, wow, can't believe I won. Unbelievable. Fantastic. Brilliant. And excellent. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you're enjoying the coverage of the contests so far. Much, much more to come. Um, let the designers know what you think. Go and leave some love on the other content creators that are joining our team this year. They are wonderful and lovely and great and deserve all of your views and likes and thumbs up and all those cool things that the YouTube algorithm likes. Drop me a like if you enjoy this kind of video and uh, feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. That would be absolutely fantastic. Check out the Patreon. There's a list of my wonderful, excellent and beautiful patrons, patrons, patrons on the screen to the left. Lots and lots of behind the scenes and cool stuff coming out on the Patreon, on the Patreon um, every month. That will be it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Until next week with another entry into the contest, I will see you later.